Elijah Charles Kiage. Guess what? We are live on YouTube. Metropole TV Kenya. We are live on our hashtag this morning. Hashtag business. And we are live on Facebook as well. I'm getting told. Good. So look for Metropole TV. We shall be talking one on one this morning. We are talking about the issues that you should know, the trending issues in the economy. One that we already know is about the taxi operators. So this morning we're asking you the question, why are you able to use your mobile application to get a taxi on your way to work? Talk to us. Did you struggle a bit yesterday during the lunch hours to get a taxi? Talk to us as well. Are you a taxi operator and you're worried about your source of revenue getting interfered with since your strike is indefinite? And what do you think should be done on that? Talk to us as well. We shall sample some of those views at the tail end of the show today. Good. This morning, I'm joined in by Dr. Njaramba and Peter Munga in the studio as we look at these issues that are touching your pocket this morning. But before we get there, Dr. Njaramba, I'd like to seek a quick uh, view on this issue of maize in this country. There is no budget here that we'll ever get done with and then we say we don't have no, we, we don't have issues of maize prices in this country. The talk is that farmers are hoarding. But the truth is there's no farmer coming up right now saying the government is not buying our maize, meaning the maize is somewhere. Parliament says don't import because we have maize. Okay. At the back end of this conversation, we've seen that some markets now are retailing at 4,800 shillings. Just 200 shillings, shy of 5,000 shillings. The other markets are also following suit. Just a few weeks ago, one good 90 kg, or the, sorry, a 2 kg packet of unga was going for 111 shillings. Now, we've hit the 150 shillings mark. What happens in the next few weeks is that it's bound to even reach 200 shillings as Kinjuri fears. What should we do now? You know? Because this is a situation that needs to rectify. Uh, Siba, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's actually not what we should do now. It's yes. what we ought to have done a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, the issue of maize in Kenya is a recurring issue. It happens year in, year out. We expect the problem again will occur next year, a time like now, the maize problem. Uh, of course, I feel that this is a man-made problem, of course. It's a cartel issue mm -hmm. where the businessmen would want to make a, a, a kill out of the problem. And uh, the government should be there at any time to, pre uh, to protect it, uh, its citizens. Eh? Like uh, now, the issue of uh, maize, we see that uh, there's, there, there are some areas in the country where there is a lot of maize, of course, at a very, very low pri price. Now, the government should actually uh, embark on purchase of such before even we think of going out, out of the country to import. Yes. It must have exhausted mm -hmm. the maize available. And also a system verifying that there is no maize holding anywhere. You remember uh, last time when we had the scandal, we had uh, businessmen claiming that they've imported the maize, while in actual fact it was just uh, available locally. So uh, I think the problem is man-made and yes. therefore the government should come in and develop a system of making sure that the maize being held is is never happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of uh, 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 maize not bought from the farmer, it does not occur. Yes. Yes. Mr. Munga, yes. Dr. Jaramba says, look, we, the government needs to come up with a system of making sure that once there is availability of maize from the farmers in the country, they need to get it before it's gotten by somebody who now keeps it wherever we yeah. don't know. Mm. But how is this system going to be efficient if the government by itself doesn't therefore give farmers proper incentives yeah. when it comes to getting the maize from them? Yeah. Do you think that's the solution? Uh, actually, as uh, Dr. Tari puts it, mm -hmm. the problem starts much earlier. Yes. There's, there are already a lot of people anticipating there will be this systematic failure yes. in government. The problem with somebody said with failing to plan is planning to fail. 
So our country has reached a place whereby we totally failed to plan in all these issues. So we have to fail. And uh, uh, these middlemen have taken advantage. They know that we can't, we can't plan. They know all these things. So actually it's not even that the, man, the maze is with the farmer. The maze is with the middlemen. They are the people pushing these prices up. They bought the maize. They have already put it somewhere. They are now controlling everything. Yes. And they are very clever. They have known that selling this maize to the government will just make them even more poor. Because government will not pay in time. Government will take a lot of time. Their maize will get rotten in, in the stores. So this time what they have done, they have become cereal boards on their own. Mm -hmm. So they buy the maize. They keep somewhere. Now they control the prices. They are able to talk. And then technology is another thing. Technology is, as much as a very good thing, it has now united all these middlemen. They are able to talk, to control, to speak to one another. They are able to, to know what is going to happen. Actually, yes. they can predict. Mm -hmm. And they have got... We have young people nowadays coming from the universities. They call them acutural scientists. Mm -hmm. eh? Is that the word? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they are able to know what, where the maze is, what they can do, how they can buy, where they can store. Yes. So that's what's happening right now. This is an artificial shortage. Mm -hmm. But uh, funnily, the farmer will not benefit, neither will the government benefit. Neither will the consumer, the Ugali eater like me, will continue to suffer more as our government continues to fail in planning. Yes. Just one comment on this, Dr. Njaramba, just before we, we step out and start the conversation this morning. The thing is, we talk about all this maize getting hoarded, but it's the same same Kenyans who are hoarding this maize. But when you look at even what the government does, now that they're talking about importing of maize, but when it comes to taking care of our millers locally, because we don't know some of them are, have closed a shop because they have a lesser supply of the commodity they used, they're supposed to use to make this unga. Now, if you look at the 2019-2020 budget, even the import duty, the 50% import duty, if you get your commodity from EAC. Because if you look in Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, they're getting this commodity at cheap prices. It's only in Kenya where these prices are way up there. Why didn't the government answer for say in 2019-2020, because we're talking about food security, this, if you import maize from Uganda, Tanzania, and, and our neighbors, then the import duty you're supposed to pay is being taken off if you're talking about lessening this price in the country sure sure actually the problem happens mainly because of the planning issue and and as much as we are talking about the issue of planning yes i, I think it's a deliberate of course you know the cartel has actually uh, even uh, infiltrated the government it is in the government itself We've given the government all the tools necessary, not only the tools, including our resources. We pay tax so that the government is able to implement the policy. That goes to protecting the consumers. Mm -hmm. That goes to uh, actually making the welfare of the consumer better. Now, in the process of actually uh, addressing this problem, from my view, the government let it punish those people that are holding the maze, the cartel. Yes. Uh, to do that is simple. Open the import. Let everybody, including uh, uh, just as uh, the miller in the locals, let mm -hmm. them import dutifully. Yes. And the cartels now will start feeling it. Because they hold the maze so that the price will go up. So they and then they, they, they release the, 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 yes. the maze. Uh -huh. Now to punish them is so simple. Allow importation from, you can actually save any maize coming from the co commercial region. Yes. Live alone the East Africa. It's duty free. Anybody mm -hmm. can import. Yes. Anybody. And by that, you will see within no time a mm -hmm. lot of maize coming to the market by the cartel trying to release, of course, through panic. Yes. Before the price actually uh, uh, really comes to the floor, they will release that maize. So the issue is do not license few individuals open the importation to anybody yes at any time until the problem is solved all right mm. so mr munga just want us to 
to open the conversation there for this morning. Yeah. Now, mobile lenders may soon be required to indicate whether their products have been licensed by the Central Bank of Kenya if they are to be successfully carry out operations in the country. Now, according to the Central Bank Governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, there's a growing number of digital lenders in the market, many of whom are offering credit to customers without undergoing any regulation, which can lead to a bitrage and also put consumer data at risk. Now, the Governor made these remarks at the margins of the Afro-Asia FinTech Festival, which kicked off yesterday at the Kenya School of Monetary Studies in Nairobi. Now, there have been attempted or asserted concerns and attempts from sections of parliament also to see to the treatment of any financial service in the country as a bank. Is this the right move from the governor and what implication is this likely to have on the fintech in the economy? Yes, Mr. Munga, I just yes. want to start yes. from this point. The governor's concern is that they are not regulated isn't it? Yes. But it doesn't want to say, I want to treat them as a bank. <laughs> so now we have these interest rates being unified. The way in which they carry their businesses become unified. Why is he avoiding treating fintech in this country as a bank? You see, in fact, the question should be, where has he been? Yes. You know, <laughs> he's been talking about it. No, the other day he, had, he, were, he was yes. called before the Senate, uh -huh. and the Senate has put him to task. They asked him, "You are telling us that there is no regulation that regulates mobile lenders," and he said, "Yes, there is none." I mean, that is his work, my brother. There is no way you can allow people, companies coming yes. from from the moon, from Mars, from Jupiter, to land in Kenya, collect money from us, put huge interest rates they have not disclosed their their intentions you have nowhere to sign you don't know where they've come from you don't know where the money comes let me tell you this you can't even talk about changing the currency and making sure that you are mopping out the 1000 notes and bringing when you have got people who are not regulated yes. like mobile lenders mm -hmm. because i can use that even to money launder i can clean my money starting such a, 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 a thing these things are not regulated and the question is, how? In a country like Kenya, a country that has laws, has parliament, has what? This is a very sad topic to talk about this morning. Yes. That you can be talking about mm -hmm. something happening in this country, yet we have all these organs and it's not regulated. Yes. To me, I'm bored. I'm, yes. I'm even bored. Dr. Njaramba, Mr. Munda seems bored. He's saying, I'm bored. well, it's yeah. time for us to talk about regulation. Is it too late? Now, you know, uh, this issue of mobile lending, uh, yes. of course, came in uh, to address, uh, of course, a gap. And that's why it has succeeded. Is it, now, is it addressing a gap, really, Dr. Jerome? You see, the success of the mobile phone yes. definitely is, a, 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 is by the fact that there was a gap. Mm -hmm. You know, a market all, uh, is available if it is not addressed. So that's what the mobile phone and the uh, the, 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 the the issue of uh, mobile banking came in. Now, the issue of uh, regulation, definitely, it's required. You know, the, 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 the function of the central bank, on top of maintaining the balance between the demand and supply for yes. money, there is also the issue of security for that currency. Now... If this mobile uh, banking and mobile lending is actually not regulated, remember it may actually give a room. You know, the issue of money supply and uh, increase does not only occur by printing or releasing more currency into yes. the market. Yes. It also occurs due to increased circulation. And if circulation, if that money occurs through the process of uh, maybe that speed of circulation, then you'll find that uh, we'll have more money chasing few goods. Now, to address that, of course, the, uh, the, the central bank, as a regulator, needs to be aware that this is what is happening in terms of money supply, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the speed of circulation. Yes. And the other issue is the issue of money laundering, as uh, 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 it has been mentioned. Eh? The money laundering can occur very easily through mobile banking. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, uh, uh, as much <coughs> as we are addressing the issue of deposits of money, the, 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 the return of the old currency, the yes. one 
1000 uh, Kenya no. shilling. Mm-hmm. Now, you know we can deposit a lot of money through mobile banking can do uh, 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 maybe even over a million a day. Yes. Uh, because I'll just uh, uh, have to address several number of mobile uh, 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 mobile lines. Yes. Then a different agents. Mm-hmm. And I'm able to release a lot of money back to back to the circulation. So money laundering is occurring effectively through mobile uh, banking and also mobile lead. Yes. So regulation is completely necessary. Necessary. Now we do know that the digital, now the, the Central Bank of Kenya government has really been pushing them and telling them I think it's time for you to get regulated. Now they did realize this heat. Now that we do have the digital lenders association mm-hmm. or a union let me mm-hmm. call them. Yeah, it's actually a union. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? And they're saying that what we're looking into is the discipline of our members, mm. isn't it? They're mm. coming up with their yeah, own yeah, code of laws, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But what they don't address is this interest rates, which every Kenyan looking at it will say, mm. if you're regulating, mm. all right, then you should have a platform in which you're regulating. It's either you regulate them as a business, mm. which the Central Bank of Kenya doesn't do. Doesn't do. It doesn't do. Mm. Then you have to look at them as a bank. Are we officially going to say now? If you're going to lend, if you're going to regulate digital lenders, then even M-Pesa Bank is now possible. Yeah. We're going to have Branch Bank, yeah. Tala Bank. Yeah. So now we can say, look, all of you guys are banks, isn't it? Yes. Therefore, your interest rates are just the same. Yes. And even the way that you offer your loan portfolios is going to be regulated as well. Is that where we're going? Is that what it should that's, do? That's where, that's where we should be going. Yes. You see, actually this problem be- began because of the M-Pesa thing. Yes. M-Pesa is good. But you see, everything good has got a place to be abused. The, the abusers must come in. Mm-hmm. So I think for some time, because of the success of uh, of uh, M-Pesa, we, we became, there was that laxity in government that, you know, it's helping our people, it's helping our people. So the regulation became less, you know. They, it was that one of let, let M-Pesa survive. It's, yes. it's a good idea. Yes. But you see, with the coming of it, now other Shylocks, the people who used to lend money, and didn't have a way to do it properly now have come in through this thing we are calling uh, mobile lending because it's a easier way it's a better way but now as you put it these things should be made banks yeah so that the, you, the only way you can regulate these people is by making them banks they should pay taxes they should show where they have their financial base is where they're getting their money they should declare their, ta- their taxes they should even declare how much profits they're making they sh- we should have their books of accounts Every end of year, they should declare their profits if they have made profit or not. They should even be on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Yes. Actually, M-Pesa should be on Nairobi Stock Exchange, not as Safaricom, but as M-Pesa. <laughs> as M-Pesa. That is the only way we as Kenyans yes. can be part of it. Mm-hmm. We can now benefit. But when it hides under a, a mobile telephony or something like that, then we lose it. And that is why you discover now, big banks are also coming in and wondering, if M-Pesa can do it, why not us? That's why now you see things like Equitel. Yeah. Equitel comes in to compete uh, M-Pesa because they say if M-Pesa can do it, we can do it under a platform called Equitel. Yes. And that is dangerous. As Dr. Tal says, it is the most dangerous thing that can happen in a country. We have a country where somebody sang a song, one of these young fellows sang a song called System Ya Majambazi. It is, the, the, pl- the Majambas is planned in advance. Mm-hmm. They think when we are asleep, what can we do to get this money? Yes. And they're doing it. Mm-hmm. All right, Dr. Jaramba, just the last question on this. Yes, regulate them, isn't mm-hmm. it? Is there mm-hmm. another side that we should be looking into? Yes, we're talking about regulating them, but is there the other side? What are some of the disadvantages we're likely to fall into when it comes to fintech in this country? We do know that they stand more than at more than 150 now, currently in the Kenyan economy, that are registered, <coughs> licensed to operate within the Kenyan economy. Are there adverse effects to regulating them? No. Uh, you know, as much as uh, we would want to regulate, mm-hmm. we have options. Huh? Yes. One is that as much as uh, we want to put them into the category of banking, yes. of course, calling them financial technology, uh, fine. Already we have a name for them. Eh? We are calling them mobile banking. Yes. Uh, I, I think we should uh, tailor make uh, the regulations more to fit them rather than make them fit the bank yes uh, one reason is that we should not kill technology one thing we will not we will all agree is that uh, the f- uh, the financial technology has made 
the economy of Kenya to perform better than when we had uh, none. Eh? Mm -hmm. And therefore, we cannot kill that. We should not discourage. Uh, rather, we should encourage. But again, for seeing uh, some of kind of uh, uh, the, the risks that may occur with it, and now address those risks mm -hmm. through well, regulations. So regulations should be tailor-made to fit them, not the other way around, not to take them to fit the banks. Yes. Uh, of course, the, the gap Mm -hmm. will then again occur yes. another sector will try to address it all right now I just want us to cross over to another contagious issue this morning now, we do know the council of governors led by the council chairman weekly <coughs> have to wait till friday for petition they have filed on the county revenue allocation to be presented before the supreme court now according to oparanya it appears that counties have been left unable to make their own budgets with only court salaries as the only role they are playing. Now, the governors now say there has risen a cash crunch at the counties that needs to be managed and therefore seek the Supreme Court advisory on a number of issues regarding budgetary allocations of the Division of Revenue Bill. The Commission on Revenue Allocation gave counties 310 billion. And now governors claim if SRC can be respected when it comes to allocation, then the CRA as the Commission on Revenue Allocation should be respected as well. They are fighting appropriation bill that was signed by the President on the grounds that the controller of budget might be trading on an illegality, illegality upon release of money to counties the governors have not agreed on the cuts. I just want to take two minutes and look at a, an interview that uh, one of our reporters, senior reporters, Victoria Munga, did with um, a member of parliament on exactly what it is they're fighting for when it comes to getting a fair allocation of the funds. Richie, three minutes, please. All right. He calls it a major constitutional moment. His drawing is thinking from the 2010 constitution that talked about devolution. And it said that some of these counties need to be given the ability by the national government to actually become self-sustainable. Mr. Munga, I want us to start from here. What services are these that the counties are looking at that they can have right now when they talk about more revenue allocation and are they justified constitutionally therefore to say we need more money yeah, they are very justified are uh, they yes you see mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is that uh, the reason why we even had the 2010 constitutional uh, review the major landmark was devolution yes devolution brought 
you know, power closer to the people. And we can't run away from it. Yes. Devolution has done a lot, has changed a lot of things, and it has been felt. We can't run away from it in our counties. The only issue is funding has been low. Let us agree. In a country that is riddled with poor planning, riddled with corruption, riddled with all these kind of things, corruption has suffered. It's actually taking the brunt of it. Yes. Because when the money doesn't come on time, my friend, anywhere, even when your salary doesn't just come on time, you will fail to plan. Corruption will come in. You will borrow. You will go into loans. All these things are now affecting county governments. Yes. And we can't run away from it that central government is killing devolution. That one is, is given. Yes. The question that also comes in, what ha has devolution units or devolved units or what we call counties done to come out of these halls that the, the government, the central government is throwing them in? For example, when we talk of a county like Trukana, from that map you have there on, mm -hmm. the, on the board, yes. you can see this county is big, it's huge. And it has resources. It may not have rain, but the resources in Trukana County are big. What has Trukana County, as a county itself, done? Mm -hmm. What have the regional blocks, like say the Western Regional Block or the Lake Region Block, of those counties that come from the Reg Lake Region, what have they done on their own to sustain themselves? The issue is sustaining. The and issue that's why is sustainability, paid. isn't it? And I want us to talk about this issue in tandem with yeah. what we're seeing right now in yeah. terms of uh, how counties are using their development money. Now, we do know that, um, I'm coming to you, Dr. Njaramba, now we do know that, um, just before we get here, we do know that um, CIA Nakuru Nyandarwa yeah. tail in development spending. Mm. Even as we look for more money, the way in which we use this money that we are asking for is getting spent on, quote, the controller budget says, priorities are not getting right as the counties. Is it okay for the counties to demand for more money when we have these headlines also at the face of the economy, Dr. Njaramba? Yes, Simba. Now, let me agree with the, first, I agree with the, the governor. Yes. Right, that we have a constitutional movement. For me, I, I feel we have a problem on how the, the constitution framed, especially when it comes to allocation of revenue between yes. uh, the the various body in the government one is that we have CRI the the the, the commission, the commission of, of revenue, revenue allocation, allocation. Mm -hmm. whose mandate is actually to allocate resources to various yes then we have treasury of course treasury mainly deals with the the issue of uh, central government mm -hmm. money but now we have the parliament and the constitution still give them the power to make a decision when it comes to where the, where uh, the money, the money to go, will go. So whatever CRA so says still has to go back to parliament, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yes. So the question, I, of course, I keep asking myself. Yes. Why do you have CRA? Where they use so much energy, revenue, uh, and of course time. And then uh, make decisions, sometimes very, very good decisions, based on... Uh, not only political consideration, but fiscal, fiscal consideration. Yes. The revenues available in the need uh, uh, to various uh, sectors of the economy. Then we have parliament. Parliament, remember again, is a political process. Whereby once they are not happy, we, you know, we have, uh, of course, what we have in the, in the, in the, in the issue of uh, uh, the revenue uh, uh, bill, uh, the, the, the appropriation bill, mm -hmm. that's the money going to the county. Yes. I will tell you it's not an issue of finance. It's supremacy battle. Of course, now what we are just uh, seeing uh, currently is supremacy battle between the uh, the two na the National Assembly, that the, 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 the Parliament yes. and the Senate. And the Senate. We, I can tell you for sure <laughs> the issue is not about money. It's not even about money, it's just uh, supremacy. So, uh, <laughs> so it, we need to actually <laughs> look at that. Yes. Then once we go now to your question about yes. the, 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 the spending by the counties, eh? and uh, if you look keenly about the procedures, uh, that goes to releasing because you need to dig deep why have they not spent is it an issue of release because we have uh, a situation where 
county would request for finances from uh, of course uh, through the uh, the, C, uh, the control budget yes cob but uh, of course the money is not there of course you know the government collect and it releases yes. and once it collects of course it defines where money will go first mm -hmm. so is it an issue that the money has not been released despite the fact that the counties have requested for them there is also the issue of planning by counties again yes where the, the, you know, like for example, if you are to uh, construct a building that would take, would take maybe four years to complete, it, it is not logical to allocate all the money in one financial year. It would be good, like for example, if uh, uh, the following financial year, which you start the project, it's only the issue of planning, developing BQ and all that. Allocate the least money possible yes. so that come the f other year, now you are able to, c you allocate money as your absorption capacity. Mm -hmm. So I think that should be an issue. The issue of release from the, from this, uh, from uh, this, uh, the, the, the consolidated account. Yes. And the issue of uh, uh, allocating per absorption capacity. Yes. I think that should be a... a that should be the key focus. The, uh, okay. Mm. I'm going to just quick on this because I think we only have five minutes left. Mm. I'm getting told. Mm. Good. Now, upon the High Court ruling on, uh, on, uh, on Friday, mm. in case they don't get it their way, just remember that the government, the president just signed mm. a bill that is supposed to make possible for the county to use this money that they don't want. Meaning that the Commission on Revenue Allocation is pretty much going to release these funds. Yes. What happens now? Because there's an okay from the president, yes, yes allocate the funds. Yeah. But the governors are saying, no, we don't want these funds, we want more. So what happens upon a decision on Friday by the High Court? The supremacy battles will continue. Uh, yes. Of course, they, even if the court, they'll appeal, they'll go to, they'll, you know, all that kind of shenanigans. They'll yes. go, go through all that. Um, the, the issue is this. Unless sanity comes into our people and our politicians, yes, uh, is what I'm just calling this morning a uh, system of majambazi. Yes, everybody is pulling on his <laughs> side, and majambazis are playing their game, and yes. we are just pawns in this kind of game. Uh -huh. uh, but I liked what you had asked my brother before that when headlines like this one, CIA Nakuru, are 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 spending more on salaries already. Yes. Already, that's what they are being accused of. Yes. You know, that you are spending on salaries. So when they tell us that we have, the only money we have received will only go for salaries, that is exactly what you've been doing. <laughs> so, so there is nothing new. Yes. Because most of our counties actually are spending their money mm -hmm. on salaries. On salaries. I just want us to clear this morning, just one quote, just one comment from each of you. This is an ongoing process, yeah. but we need to see exactly how this story goes. Spot Pesser reacts. Now, I'm just going to mention the figures and I can give one quote, one quote yeah. each yeah. as we close the show. Now, they're saying, look, these are the facts. Now, the revenue that we made in 2018 was 208 billion shillings, isn't it? Mm. Now, gross profit, after everything, 9 billion shillings. Tax remitted, 6.4 billion shillings. Yeah. Good. Socioeconomic investment, football, 693 million. Yeah. Rugby, 600 million. Boxing, 75 million. Rally, 2.8 million. Agriculture, environment, conservation, water access, 73 million. Mm. Education, 557 million. We have community health development, 41 million. Mm. Good. They're talking about sponsorships. They are quite of them. I'm just going to count them. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. That is in the whole of 2018. So who's fooling who, Dr. Njaramba? Is mm -hmm. it for the or the government? Just one uh, quote. Uh, uh, generally, if I actually talk about the issue of uh, uh, betting, eh? mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is the, the, the there are several types of good into the market. Eh? Yes. There is a, uh, a good we call quasi uh, 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 or, or a good. Uh, let me let me call it in uh, simple terms. A good that probably the public would uh, be discouraged to consume. Eh? Yes. The best way to regulate over that is taxation. Eh? And remember again, uh, of course, to sum uh, to sum it up, eh? we need to uh, 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 encourage investment, no matter what, because again, mm -hmm. this uh, it it has seen kind of uh, 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 major investment into the market. But we cannot resort to ad hoc means of dealing with it. We yes. have a system, we have a law, 
in a mass be followed. Mass be followed. Yes. Yeah, 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 All right, Mr. Yeah. Munga, just one word on one that. Word, one word. Yes. System yes. your majamba. System your majamba. Because yes. somebody <laughs> wants to eat from safari. <laughs> that uh, yes. those Fort Pesa. Yes. Miss Fort Pesa have not greased somebody's hands in yes. the government. Yes. Can they do it quickly so that we go ahead? Oh, okay. System your majamba. This morning we just come to the end of this conversation. Remember, beating business in the country is one of the stories that we keep on following in the economy because we do know it affects the weight of the money in your pocket actually directly you do know the numbers we take a short break once we come back the state of SMEs in Kenya let's talk about importing how do they get affected I'm drawing from the fact that the president has had to visit that is the Mbakasi inland port twice let me tell you twice to get the cargo released has the face changed good after the break